with many manufacturers hedging the bets that the next big segment in the motorcycle market will be the adventure scooter, we've seen a sharp rise in the number of brands bringing their own interpretations of off-road scooters to the global biking community. So today we're taking a look at the best fully off-road capable adventure scooters available for this year, starting with a bike that I'm sure not many of you will have heard of, but I'm pretty sure we'll know about soon. Now this, the Venture 150 from FKM, is a truly dirt track orientated scooter that of course has a more than capable on-road ability for the urban explorers amongst us. But what is it about this bike that we like so much that we thought we'd include it in today's review? Well to start with, for those of you that like a nighttime adventure, the main headlamp array uses four LED projectors that puts out a significant amount of light for a small bike like this, and of course all the lighting is LED including a very nice signature stop and tail light. The scooter comes in a choice of four bold colour schemes, namely red, white, black, grey and features a large 7 inch LCD dash that can keep you fully informed of the bike's status. So this bike gets a 4 stroke liquid cooled SOHC 4 valve engine and has a total displacement of 150 cubic centimetres that can get you up to a max of around 115 km an hour or 72 miles an hour. Now power max is out just a little shy of 17 horsepower and you get 14.6 newton meters of torque at your disposal through a CVT automatic belt transmission system. So moving on to the bike's tyre configuration, it's quite similar to the Honda ADV150 which uses a 14 inch front and 13 rear tyre configuration. However the Venture 150 gets the addition of a dual channel ABS braking system giving more control over the bike on loose surfaces. Suspension is taken care of by a pair of USD double shocks up front with double shocks to the rear and of course disc brakes all round. So what else do you get with this bike? Well, you get a two-way tinted adjustable windshield, electronic keyless ignition, aluminium pillion handle grips and pegs, rear luggage and box mounts, a leather seat with a non-slip finish, a 9.3 litre fuel capacity, USB charging and tons of underseat storage just to name a few. To sum it up, I'd say it's a great bike with great off-road capability, but on the downside some of you will find it's a bit lacking in power as it's only a 150. The new Husky from Sim looks to be set for a showdown with the ever popular XADV150. But before we tell you why it's got a good chance when it goes up against Honda's Team Red, let's first take a look at what the bike's all about, starting with its 150cc single cylinder liquid cooled electronically fuel injected engine that churns out around 15 horsepower and 14.4 newton meters of torque. Now of course this does put the scooter into the Year 2 license bracket as it has a 150cc engine and like our last bike may leave it a bit lacking in power. Nevertheless I'm pretty sure this bike will still be very desirable to a large selection of the biking community. Now one of the things we like about this bike is like the Honda ADV150 it sports very rugged looks. Sim's new Husky is also a very full off-road capable machine thanks to a pair of dual sport tyres and heavy duty suspension that incorporates long travel telescopic front forks, a backlink offset rear monoshock and Sim's anti-lift engine hanger system that are all definitely going to help you soak up the bumps and of course give you increased stability when off-road. Now some of the other noteworthy features of this bike include a premium LED light system all round as well as a fancy full colour TFT instrument cluster that automatically adjusts its brightness depending on the ambient lighting. But perhaps what really separates this Husky 150 and gives it a fighting chance against the likes of Honda is the inclusion of a massive 15 litre fuel tank, meaning that this bike could actually be capable of around 720 kilometres or 450 miles of range, giving you the capability of going way beyond where the road ends on one tank. This new adventure scooter from Lifan, although very off-road capable as you'll see in a moment, is what you would class as perhaps an entry-level bike. The new 2022 KBV150 has been updated with a very dirt track friendly variant for this year and features a host of mechanical and accessory upgrades. So to start with it gets a pair of new gold aluminium spoked wheels which are also compatible with tubeless tyres that are generally only found on considerably more expensive motorcycles. In the looks department, a new tail rack, a big windshield and angular body panels give it a rugged sporty appearance with a much stiffer redesigned suspension system that uses a set of 37mm upside down forks up front 
with the mono shock at the rear, giving it plenty of off-road capabilities. So just like with our last two bikes, of course you get all the usuals, like an LED DLR headlamp setup, an LCD instrument cluster, USB and 12 volt charging outlets, adjustable handbars, a side stand engine cutoff button and an idle stop start system to name but a few. Engine wise, this is the last of the 150s we'll be looking at today and has a single cylinder liquid cooled unit that produces 12 HP and is the least powerful of all our bikes today. But let's not forget it's also the least expensive, weighing in at around 2,400 US dollars, making it around 1,850 pounds sterling. It has an 11 litre fuel tank, 14 inch wheels with meaty dual sport tyres and 180 millimetres of ground clearance. The new 2022 Honda ADV350 with its tough stance and very accessible riding position and height definitely stands out from the crowd. It has rugged angles and block colours that all help to promote an off-road look that was so obvious in its older sibling, the 2021 XADV, and was clearly the obvious style benchmark for this new 350. So when the guys from Team Red's R&D department first put pen to paper for this new bike, the fact that this fully off-road capable bike should remain a scooter and its practicality not forgotten was definitely on the agenda. But what do we mean by that? Well, for instance, there's still room for two full face helmets under the seat, the bike gets USB charger in the glove box and the option for smart key operation, not to mention an LCD dash that can integrate the Honda voice control system with your smartphone. The bike's adventurous styling perfectly accentuates the 350's front end and offers a natural riding position and easy control of the bike. Motorcycle style top and bottom yokes increase rigidity for the entire front end and it's 37mm USD fork setup that features 120mm of travel. It has a tubular steel frame incorporating twin rear shocks that definitely delivers a competent ride whenever you're off road. Now when it comes to the power department there's plenty of acceleration and speed on tap as the engine gets a peak power output of 21.5 kilowatts or just over 29 horsepower at 7500 rpm. The bike can generate a peak torque output of 31.5 newton meters or 23.3 foot pounds at 5250 rpm and can also be adjusted through the use of Honda's selectable torque control system. So Kimco have decided to get in on the act as well and are taking their scooters into the wild as the firm's first adventure model arrives in the form of the DTX 360. Now this bike's not only the firm's first crossover machine but it's also one of only a handful of big boss step through machines that have been specifically designed to take on off-road terrains. And what's more, it obviously has the recently updated XADV in its sights as its main competition. But how does it actually stack up against our last bike from Honda? So first things first, the DTX gets its power from an A2 licence compatible 320cc 4 valve liquid cooled single that can pump out just shy of 30 horsepower and 22 foot pounds or 30 newton metres of torque and comes as standard with Kimco's traction control system just to help keep you in check on loose or slippery surfaces. Kimco's opted for what seems to be the most popular wheel configuration for this class of ADV scooter in the form of a 14 inch front and 13 inch rear shod with a pair of dual purpose semi knobbly adventure spec tyres. Suspension is provided by telescopic subfront with twin shocks to the rear. Braking comes by way of discs all round and the bike has a commanding 800mm seated riding position set with wide handlebars helping to finish off the adventure lock. You also get keyless ignition with this bike as standard along with full LED lighting and a large full colour dash. Range wise you're getting a 12.5 litre tank this should be good for around 325 kilometers or just a tad over 200 miles on one tank. So I was going to include the XADV750 from Honda in this review, but seeing as it's been around for a while, we didn't think it was worth it, so I left it out. Anyway, we'd love to hear which one of these bikes you think looks the most off-road capable, so drop us a comment in the usual place. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the review, sub if you want, stay upright folks, I'm out of here.